All right, we're back. Hey, I did a technology thing and it worked. <laughs> For all the foundation members from 2014, they understand the accomplishment <laughs> right now. So this is one of my favourite spots, is our member spotlight. So from gold level up, you ha can get up on this stage and share five minutes about who you are and what you do. So please make Evan Porter welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Fleur. Does everyone like my uh, LinkedIn profile picture? You're allowed to say no, because there's a couple of people in this room, aren't they, Jay, that tell me that I have to do something about that. So guess what? That'll be on one of my lists, Linda, to get done. Um, my name's Evan Porter. A um, little bit about me. Uh, when I first got involved with Out of the Box Biz, um, I actually was a director and part owner of a business called Priority Management, not Priority. It's got an I, not a Y. Um, which is a training organisation essentially. Um, and then at the end of last year, so in December, after a number of months of thinking about it and conversations with people, I actually left that business. And for the first few months of this year, I had all of these ideas in my head and it was quite a jumbled up space. In about the last four weeks, and Jay helped that process, I spent some time with Jay, and a few other people that are members of Out of the Box Biz have helped me through this process. I have now come up with, I guess, what my new business looks like, and it's called Just Talents. And essentially what it's all about is helping people and organisations um, understand how to harness and maximise the talents that they've got to actually reach the outcomes that they're looking for. Does that make sense? Cool. That means I'm hopefully on the right track. Okay. Um, the other thing that I got to think about during this time of, um, I guess, working out who I am is what I actually do. So I've been in the learning and development game for nearly 16 years now and I knew that I didn't want to walk away from it. And the term that I love to call myself is a facilitator. So in that 16 years I've been training, I've facilitated workshops, I've coached a lot of people, I've put together end-to-end L&D uh, projects and project managed, I've done everything all the way up to being a training manager. Uh, and you know what I worked out? I've been facilitating outcomes in the training context for a long time. So you know what I'm going to do now, or I guess I'm doing now, is taking that more to facilitating outcomes for people and organisations in my own business. So what the approach I take is this. So the word talents, what do you think of when you hear the word talents? What you're good at. But it's not just the stuff that makes, you know, that you're really, really good at. So sometimes when we hear the word talent, we think of gifted and talented programs, yeah? Talents can mean strengths, it can mean capabilities, it can mean the stuff that you're good at. And this is what I believe. Every single person has their own unique set of talents. Anyone agree with me on that? Right? Often we take an approach of, we, we worry about our weaknesses and we worry about the stuff we're really good at. Yeah? There's a whole heap of things that most people have that, you know what, they're good at it and it's energising for them but they may not use it anywhere near the ability that they need to. So that's a journey that I want to take people on. And I start that with a strength profiling tool that I'm accredited um, to use and I actually got that from someone by the name of Sue Langley. Has anyone ever come across Sue Langley? She runs an organisation, Emotional Intelligence Worldwide. So I know it's a great tool. I've got a lot of time for Sue. Um, I also do some personality profiling. We also just look at what is it about that person that makes them unique? Does that make sense? Right? Because there's a lot within us often that actually helps us get where we want to go. I take that and then I look at service. And service at an individual level is about helping people. Who's heard of Zig Ziglar? Yeah, one of his quotes is, you can get anything you want in this world if you help enough other people get what they want. So it's looking at that, not only your talents, but getting your attitude towards service or helping people. Understanding what your outcomes are. Linda spoke about mindsets, you know, what your goals are. There's lots of you know, um, programs out there, but we've got to make sure you know where you're heading. So taking that approach, we then map out a pathway for the individual or for the organisation. So that pathway might include things like programs that uh, they would attend, training that they would attend, coaching, mentoring, etc. If we look at the organisational level, it's the same but at a team level and there's more of a business consultancy path. So the end result, if you like, is you find out what you're good at, you get your attitude towards service right, you work out where you're going, and then we map out a path and take you on that journey. Does that make sense? One more component, and that is 
I like calling it resilience, which is a little bit of my story, which you know I might share with people one day, given the opportunity. Another way of looking at it is never, ever give up. And that's the other component that we build in there. So in essence, that's what Just Talents is all about. Uh, Clarity's been about in the last four weeks. I'm really, really excited about it because it's about building people up and that's what I'm all about. So if that sounds exciting to you or people you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you or some of the people um, that I might be able to help. Thank you. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. So we've got the boys up tonight for our showcases. Gary Wilmot, insane madman that I just admire so much. So come on down, Gary Wilmot. Please give it up for Gary. Must be the night for introverts to take the stage. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, it's interesting that there's been so much mention tonight of mindset. For those, uh, there's some of you in the room that don't know, at the end of 2011, I made a decision. Basically, uh, I decided I was going to change my mindset. I was basically a fat guy. I was a lifetime smoker. I was um, very negative, very bitter, very sarcastic. And I'd had enough. I was 42 and I knew that wasn't the way that I was going to live for the rest of my life. So I changed, started to change my mindset. And to cut a fairly long story short, uh, over a period of about 18 months, I gave up smoking, I got fit, and I achieved my initial ambition of completing Perth Marathon. Now, it was uh, six hours... Six hour, 47 uh, minute marathon, so it's not the, uh, you know, there were no land speed records broken. Um, but I had this amazing sense of achievement once I crossed that finish line. Uh, so amazing that over the next couple of months, uh, my brain was doing overtime. And I decided that uh, not only did it feel so amazing, not only was it actually a simple choice of, uh, you know, taking responsibility for my own life and changing that attitude and mindset that, you know, everybody deserved to feel the same. It was, you know, it was possible. If, 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 if I, and, and if you can see a photo of me then, you know, you would know that I am, even though I'm not that slim now, I am still a lot smaller than I was then. But if I could do that, then anybody could do anything. So how could I prove it? And this is where the crazy kicks in. Because following a joke that was uh, posted on Facebook, I decided it'd be a jolly good idea to run and walk from Perth to Brisbane, five and a half thousand kilometres approximately. And another long story short, you know, through that mindset and through deciding that I could achieve that and uh, by achieving that I could prove to everybody that they could achieve anything they damn well wanted, you know, I basically left made. In fact, it's about five or six days' time. It'll be a year's anniversary when I left Perth and I arrived into Brisbane on the September the 17th last year. Now... <laughs> That's, I'm just telling you things so you can just applaud me and I can feel good. It's ego massage time. So what have I done since? I mean, those of you who have been following, and I did the live kind of feed on the night before we went into Brisbane and stuff like that, but what I've been doing since is processing what, what's happened. Uh, it's, it's almost been like um, leaving prison because I was on the road for four months and now I've got to reintegrate into society. So I've had a lot of thinking time. I've had a lot of time to put together what do we do with this. And I just really want to, um, it, it breaks down into the kind of two main areas. There's an aspect of me that wants to take this story, wants to tell the story, wants to share the passion and the possibility and the fact that you can do anything you want and to spread that word to as many people as possible. And then there's the, um, the fact that I actually went across the country under the banner of Hearts Across Australia and Hearts Across Australia has now taken on a life of its own. I'm a Heart Foundation ambassador. We're raising money for the Heart Foundation. And it was just recently approved by uh, the Heart Foundation Board in WA that all money raised through, the heart, uh, through Hearts Across Australia name will be diverted into an automated external defib program. It's the first responder program. So we can literally say to people, you know, for every so many thousand dollars we raise, we will buy one of those units, hand it over, get the local community to take the photo, front page, ego again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and just start those conversations because at the moment, you know, it's quite difficult. You go, oh, you're raising money for the Heart Foundation. That's people either get it or they don't. But if you've got these defibs and you start asking the questions, why do we need them? You know, and what, you know, I don't need it. I'm not likely to get a heart attack because I'm fitting it wrong. 
if you're fit and healthy and you're thin, you're probably going to keel over a lot quicker than me. People do it at marathons all the time. People that at park run a couple of weekends ago up at Lake Joondal, up a fit, healthy guy, had a heart attack. In London Marathon this year, a serving army captain died of a heart attack about three miles from the finish line. So it can happen to anyone. So we want to spark those conversations. And as part of that Hearts Across Australia, it started with me. That was just like the starter event. That was the launch event, me going across the country. And no, I won't stop talking about that ever. Um, but this year we sent five runners under the Hearts Across Australia banner to the London Marathon. Luckily, none of them died of a heart attack. That would have been a bit embarrassing. <laughs> So we have five runners who basically brought their dreams to life. Um, one was actually a runner who, she's crazy to me, she had a broken leg and a hip operation and hadn't trained and, and still finished the marathon in like four hours, 15 or something like that. It was just amazing to watch from afar these people experiencing uh, their dreams come true. Um, this month, um, just to coincide with my leaving of Perth, we're going to have a 101 day winter challenge. So you're all welcome to go online, look up Hearts Across Australia, sign up to do as many kilometres as you nominate over the next 101 days. It aligns with me leaving Perth and arriving in Sydney. And uh, on a personal level, my goals in terms of running is that I'm aiming to, uh, I'm actually going to sign up because there's no qualifier. I'm actually going to run uh, for Australia in the World uh, Masters Athletics Championships in the first week of November uh, in the marathon event. And then January next year, uh, complete a, uh, hopefully within cutoff time, a 100 kilometer ultra marathon on Australia Day weekend. So. <laughs> So that's really what I'm all about. I'm about going out there doing crazy stuff, not just because I enjoy it, not just because I enjoy the pain and suffering of doing a 42 kilometer run, but because by going out there, you can, I'm a living example of um, the, the Gandhi quote, you know, be the change that you wish to see in the world. You know, because you can't change other people. You can't, you know, that like lead a horse to water type quote. You can't actually grab people and change them. You can only change yourself. And if you change your thinking, you'll change your life. And you not only make your life amazing, but you can make the lives of so many other people amazing as well. So thank you for the stage. Thank you for your time. And I'll talk to you again soon, no doubt. Thanks so much, Gary. He also, out of everything he's doing, he happens to be our keynote speaker for our July party. It's Greek theme. And there's a reason why he's speaking for the Greek theme theme so stay tuned for that so our final showcase we do three um, for the month and we have got a bit of a show and tell demonstration going on from Martin Ball our sexy man I mean sexy water man oh, like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we got the sex in somewhere thank you for that I'll leave this can you just give me a hand mate and just lift this with me as soon as our, you got the muscles Let's lift this up onto here, onto the stage. Thank you. You all right there, Gary? Okay, thank you. Okay, so, who here thinks water is all equal? Don't be afraid to say yes if you do, because I did. Basically, back in January last year, I was introduced to technology from Japan that is used all over the world in hospitals to help improve the health of people. Now then, I'm going to get straight into the demo because I don't know how much time I've got and Fleur is vicious with timekeeping, so I've started my clock Fleur. Who here cleans their fruits and vegetables before they consume them? Yep. Do we use tap water, filtered water, anything like that? Okay. Most people drink, uh, obviously wash the fruits and veggies before. These are just some cherry tomatoes from Coles. Now my mum said to me, always wash the apple before you eat it because you don't know who's peed on it. <laughs> so um, clearly, obviously after that, you didn't think about eating fruit. So what I've got here is I've got the water that's been provided by Clifton. So I've got a feeling it's probably filtered water. I'm just going to pour it on here. And I'm actually going to fill this one up first um, because it will actually give it a bit more time to clean. Pardon? No, I'm all good, Pam. Thank you. So Pam's actually been to a few of my events, so she's seen what I do. This is 11.5 water that's created from the machine. 
so we're just going to leave that to sit for a few minutes while I do a demonstration on the acidity of liquids. One of the key areas I like to focus on is education around different waters. Now, does anybody here drink Gatorade? Okay. Well, the AFL are sponsored by Gatorade and um, they have an advert that says the next up and coming generation of AFL players are going to be unstoppable because they drink and consume these liquids. My zone is a sports water. Same again, a lot of athletes drink this. So what happens when a lot of athletes do things? Kids follow. Sprite, who likes to drink Sprite? No, not bothered. What about vodka lemonade? Same thing, it's lemonade, just without the vodka, Jay. Okay, what about sparkling water? Yep, okay. That clock's going very quick, Flo. Have you, have you played with my clock? Okay. So, Puro water, anybody drink Puro water? Puro is one of the fastest growing bottled waters in Australia because it's chlorine and fluoride free, so it claims. And there's, there's more in depth to that. What about coconut water? Coconut water, really, really good for you. Okay, let's test that. And then we're going to finish with the soda water because a lot of people add that into the drink. So let's just open that one up. As you can see, these are all fresh. I'm not feeling you. Right. Wow, we're on three minutes already. Okie dokie. So I've got pH drops. Basically, these are used in pools to find out whether the pool is the right pH before you get into it. So I'm just going to add a couple of drops, usually four or five drops. Now then, what are we seeing there? Does anybody know what the alkaline acidity chart looks like? Okay, illness and disease grows in acidity. This, or as you can see there, all those waters, this is sexy water, okay? Also known as kangen water. Kangen in Japanese means return to origin. Now then, this is an acidity chart. Illness and disease grows down here. What is the colour of all those liquids? Orange and yellow. Illness and disease grows. Your body is over 70% water. When people talk about getting healthy, what's the first thing they focus on? No? no food. Food. Food, food, food. But you're 70% water. If you are consuming liquids that are acidic, your body is going to be 70% acidic. That's a fact. More importantly, your, the, all these drinks are oxidised into the body. Oxidation is one of the leading causes of cancer. Oxidation is when you cut an apple in half and it turns brown. That's ageing, rusting. Uh, we're all ageing and rusting. Our skin's getting wrinkled. We're drying out because we don't consume enough water. We don't consume the right water. Now then, this water here comes in at an alkaline scale. It is not alkaline water. Nothing is added to it whatsoever. It is antioxidant rich water. If you understand antioxidants are very good for you, then you will know that this water is the best water you can drink. Now then, I'm just going to do a quick one. Just give me, give me a minute more flow. Puro water. Watch this when I add kangen water to it. I've just made it into a good water. I'm not going to go through all these stuff because it's too bad. Coconut water, let's see if we can make that good. Coconut water in any packet is that acidic. You should not be putting it in your body. However, if you get a fresh coconut and drink water from that, it is perfectly neutral and good for your body. So, look at that. I'm, look at it turning blue and it goes back. Now then, let's just see... The best bottled water we've got there, how much it takes to kill this water. Starting to go, starting to go. It'll turn yellow if I give it enough time, but Fleur's already waving her hand. Let's add a bit of coconut I don't water wave to it. My hand. Oh. We're just all wanting to know what's happening with the tomatoes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the tomatoes. Okay, so the 11.5. So remember, just a couple of minutes. Now then, when you wash your fruits and veggies in tap water, there's pharmaceuticals found in tap water, chlorine, fluoride, 
Can you see the difference? Mm -hmm. and what's come off? Yellow. Yellow. These, when people that I work with because I'm a health coach are consuming fruits and vegetables and they go on a plant-based diet, they are still acidic because they are <laughs> still consuming chemicals that unknowingly. So what we've got to do is educate people on how they can clean them properly, how they can improve their health just by changing the water they drink. That's what I do. I do a free 21 day trial for anybody who wants to try the water. I also do health seminars to obviously educate people more. Thank you Fleur for obviously letting me do the demo. And uh, guys, if you want to know anything, please come and see me and I'm sharing more information. Thank you Martin, thank, thank you. you so much. We can leave the table there. Um, there's you sure? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's totally fine. I'll just move my computer. Because I am, um, we have changed around the agenda tonight, so I'm a little bit wondering where we're at. Ah, oh, this is a cool part. So this is where I talk a little bit about the membership with Out of the Box for the benefit of the guests in the room. And this is also, I do it also for the benefit of the members because there's some members that have been with us for a long time and sometimes, a sh and some for a short time. So it's often good to rehear little snippets about um, what we do. But um, out of the box members would know there was an email that went out regarding terms and conditions. And if you're able to return that, you do receive a gift. That's all I'm going to say. I know I'm not chastising anyone. I'm just, I'm just asking. Oh, Jen, it was today. I mean, where are we? I mean, I'm only human. I mean, I have automation. Let's not go there. You'll, you'll get your gift, honey. Um, so also for members, this is now the time for you to think about who you're going to connect with that you've met or reconnected with tonight during the month while I just talk a little bit about the membership. It's only just a, a few moments. We have a variety of levels of membership at membership at Out of the Box to meet different needs. And I always, each month, just highlight on one. And this, we, um, this month, we're hi I'm highlighting gold. So gold is, the purpose of gold is to raise your pro profile. Because within a community of 120 people, I can't get 120 people on this stage. I can't get 120 people every month to have their banners in this room. It would really be chaos. So I have to work it out how we're going to get more members to do more things. And frankly, there's some people who just never want to get on that stage. So I'm not going to make them. So if you're interested in being on the stage and spending that five minutes where you share a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what you do, Martin, he asked me to do the demo because I normally do insist on talk a little bit about yourself and talk a little bit about what you do. Martin's been a gold member for quite some time so he's shared quite a lot about his personal story and he asked me to do this. I've seen this demonstration um, via video and I thought it would be a good educational experience. So we are flexible so, but it's five minutes and you're off because we are very strict with timing around here. So if that interests you, there are other, there are other benefits, um, but it just raises your profile within the community of 120 people. And there's some people in our community, community who never ever will be interested in that, and that's also okay. So that's what Gold Level Membership does for you. If you're interested in having a conversation about how out of the box membership might work for you, please just have a conversation with myself or with Pam and we can answer your questions. So that's it. And we've already had a raving fan, so thank you, Lisa, for being spontaneous. And we don't have um, Jay's name up on here because I did ask Nick, but I did ask permission for to put Jay on the spot and invite her to the stage, just to share a little bit about what she receives through her Out of the Box membership. So please make her welcome. Thanks, Fleur, and thank you, Linda. I actually did Linda's 30-minute um, session last year, and although I'm um, a sort of time management expert in my own right with working with any solutions, I still learned something from Linda, and again, it sort of reiterated, oh, okay, yep, I've done that, 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 that. Okay, it's the accountability time now. <laughs> um, talking of accountability, I've actually been an out of the box member for just over a year and um, I met Fleur at a point that I'd recently changed the branding of my business. I'd slightly gone down a different road and 
we did it just before Christmas. Don't ever change your branding just before Christmas, okay? Hey, lesson learned, school fees. And I met um, Fleur at another function and she sort of went, yes, I need to speak to you. So I met her later and I went to one of the out of the boxes. It was the energy that got me the, from my mind state. We're talking about mind state. It seems to be the key word today is the fact that it was just the sheer energy that I felt from Fleur. She was just excited to know about my business, how I was going to grow, what I was going to do. And at that point, I was ready to quit. Seriously. So I signed up with a condition. She agreed with it. We went through that. Um, I joined at um, the mentoring level and she was my accountability for the last um, number of about a year of accountability and each week I loved it it was just the energy not each week each month each month it was just the energy knowing I could call upon her so from my point of view as a member not only is it the energy of Fleur but the fact is she's actually introduced me to a lot of people many of you in the room that I've spoken to um, personally and others outside because she is a master networker and that is what out of the box is all about so if you are a visitor and you are thinking of joining i'm going to go go out of the box come and join us that doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> we're a bit crazy here but hey you understand <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much jay I don't ask what they, I don't screen what they're going to say and I'm always like goosebumps and so, yeah, thank, like, it's just an honour because, yeah, I couldn't do what I do and neither Ian or Nick are here <laughs> to do tech time. Ian Von Berg is off golfing in Thailand um, and Nick normally, they do this little spot tech time um, together. Nick normally is like, yeah, yeah, and Ian's not here, I'm going to do it kind of thing. Um, and the fact that Nick's not here, normally he's the IT solutions member of our business, it means he's holed up somewhere dealing with someone's IT issues. So um, I'm sorry we're not able to deliver on that tonight. And this was when we were going to have business tip, but we're clearly not. <laughs> so I'm just going to go through this. <laughs> Because I have to, um, because I don't know what's next. It was better the second time. Oh, it was better. <laughs> so I'd just like to uh, thank Narelle Mansa Smith, Pamela Ocoso. Unfortunately, Kate and Sharon, Kat and Sharon, couldn't be here due to they were not well um, this evening. I'd like to also um, add uh, Keith Flynn, who is our videographer from Stress. Free AV. He also is a member of Out of the Box for his Your Rela Relationship Expert business. So please go and have a conversation with him, not only about AV, but also what else he does. So I appreciate the support that these people um, provide to make this happen. Now, Caroline Shaw is um, currently residing in New South Wales. She was um, residing in Western Australia, originally from London. She is the absolute expert in how to run a highly profitable event or run an event. I'm extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I invited her to do it. I heard her webinar. I heard what she teaches and it was just incredible. And I invited her because back then, because um, our speakers, we book our speaker calendar a year in advance. And um, so I was just going and going for it and just asking these speakers, can you please come um, do what we do and I didn't really think about it you know when you're just going and do it and book them and go yeah and then <laughs> last week I had the you know okay this is how we're going to promote it and go down into the nitty-gritty detail and so she's shining as the expert she actually is again I'm like going what have I done <laughs> I've invited this event expert into my event I mean I must be clearly insane anyway she is absolutely um, the expert she is because of her topic Clifton's have also invited um, me to share the event to their connections which is something that they don't do for everybody so I'm feeling very honoured and blessed that the invitation has gone out to them because they are a venue 
And so obviously they want people to run events well. So when they saw <laughs> Caroline's topic, they just went, yeah, yeah, that'd be good for us to invite people to that. Um, so we're going to um, have hopefully um, an interesting mix of people in the room, um, more so than what we normally do, just simply because Clifton's are very guarded about who they promote because obviously they're promoting, um, they're running events all day long. So that's kind of going to be an interesting dynamic, um, which is on the 8th of June. But back to where we are now, that's in a month's time. If you're interested in an account, um, in what do you call them, an explosion session? I, do, I was just going to call it just stocks down accountability session, which is not exciting and you're all going to run. But for um, Linda's strategy session, she's got a lot booked out, but she's still got some available. Um, those sheets um, that she handed out, because obviously this is, you know, being put on the spot, a lot of you won't be available Thursday and Friday. So fill this out and you can arrange a time that you can do it on Skype or while she's here or, or whatever. And if you've got any questions about Out of the Box, then please ask me and we have open networking time. So the wine is now not in the room because we're ahead of schedule. So if we just put some music on and then amuse ourselves, we'll just arrange for the uh, wine to be back in the room and please stay and network and connect with the people that you want to do. Have I forgotten something? Don't ask me that now. <laughs> so over to you.